Hello, hello everyone. I think this is the best time to start now. Thanks a lot to Rita for the rate, of course. Um, and that's gonna be the highest number of viewers I get at the start of my stream, I suppose. So yeah, I hope you had a good stream, Rita. I think you did. And I guess you had some a good time and good viewers, but anyway, so today I was going to do Snark News Summer Series 2020 round 5. Uh, also, I guess I can do, uh, yeah, now you have uh, the this word, <laughs> yeah, sure. So. Uh, today I I'm going to do this round, but uh, I was actually going to start it in, uh, in one hour, approximately. Just not to make it too early in the contest, just start closer to the ending time. But in the meantime, I thought about doing some previous, maybe the last Code Forces Division 2 round which was held yesterday. I'm not sure if it's good or not, but maybe I can try to do it on stream and see what happens then. Because I I, I, I don't feel like starting Snark New Series right, right away. Um, yeah, but as of now, so uh, talking just to, to talk about the Snark New Series, which will be to the, a bit later to today. So this will be round five. The series has five rounds overall, and the problems are in Russian, but I translate into English automatically. And here are the current standings of the series. And whenever you solve, uh, like, for the first place you, in the round, you get 100 points, for the second place, you get 75 points, and so on. Uh, do you think Ildar will join today too? Uh, Hope so. Hopefully, hopefully. So, so since uh, Ildar can only get, so we only have one round remaining, so Ildar can only get 100 points at most to reach me. So it means that I need to get five more points. Yes, the points are according to GP table, which is, I don't think, maybe I can find the table actually. Let me try to do that too. Uh, okay, this is in Russian, but I guess, uh, yeah, whatever. So here's the table. Let's just keep it this way. So yeah, it means that I need to, to uh, gain at least five points, which means I should take at least place 26, 26 or higher. So I will try to get something. I will try not to fail badly today. So probably no blind submissions. But anyway. Uh, what do I prefer? Code Forces Div3 or uh, at Quarter Beginner Contest? I haven't done much of either, so I, I, I don't want to be unobjective in this. But as far as I could say, I think that Beginner Contests are more diverse and interesting. But Maybe I'm wrong, actually. I, I, I'm just not sure about that. Uh, yep. So, what else? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I, I'm up to solving just problems from the chat. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't... Yeah, I, I, I do play chess sometimes, but not much, and I'm pretty bad at it. Anyway. So I think that we should try to look at the last Division 2 round, and then we'll switch to Snark New Series afterwards. I think that could be a good idea. Mm. Yeah. Mm, just a second.
Uh, could you try updating your algolib on GitHub? I could, but I, I don't think I will do it on stream anyway. But later, yeah, I, maybe I should keep that in mind. And also, I, I guess I am actually planning to have another stream um, later, but, oh, actually, let me check something, because I, I, I thought that I, I could stream after the next Division 2 round on Saturday, but apparently I cannot. At least I cannot do that right after the round, because on Saturday as well, we are going to have uh, Facebook Hacker Cup round three. Is that true? Yeah, it's also on Saturday. So I'm not sure about Saturday as such, but still. Whatever. Mm, so let's just, for now, let's just go to Code Forces and see. I'm not going to try too hard in this activity and I well I, I might start virtual virtual participation as I haven't tried the problems at all but maybe I, I won't be trying too hard and I will be I will try to explain my thoughts more more thoroughly than usually than what I usually do in let's say snark news series uh no 21 15, okay, whatever. Uh, explain a bit then what do you mean? I mean, explain the problems during the during the round, I guess. Nice jacket from TCO, thank you. I like it too. It was from TCO 16, as you might be able to see, hopefully. Making it less boring, as Erikta would say, yeah, sure. But actually, I would say that for sure, I, I'm, I don't know about the viewer's experience, but uh, subjectively, I, I would think that my this series, I'm doing a pretty good job at trying to explain what I'm doing throughout the process, during rounds, and hopefully it doesn't even make me, make me participate, make me perform worse, yeah. Is there an algorithm you do not know? Yeah, I think a lot of them. But I don't know them, so I, I cannot tell which one. Sorry about that. Mm. So yeah, but but still, even even in even uh, in winter when I had my previous series, I actually had uh, more viewers during the contest anyway than during the explanations. So maybe it's just about like what people like on average, but whatever. Anyway, uh, let's go. So we have five problems, only five problems, in a regular division two round, which is not even a division one. Emerge Division 1. Okay. So A, B, C, D, E also. Nice. Yeah, I see that you'll... Uh, some people say that they love explanation. I mean, that definitely could be the case, but I, I just feel like... Maybe, like, some people do and some people don't. That's fine. Okay. So we have an even length array A consisting of zeros and ones. The elements are enumerated from 1 to N. We want to remove at most N over 2 elements in the way that alternating sum of the array will be equal to zero. So we want the sum of all elements at the odd positions and some of the elements at the even positions to become equal. And we... Uh, yeah. Yep, I have to turn this off. So, I mean, yeah, uh, this is problem a from division two round. Division two is not the lowest division. It's not the most easy, like not, not the easiest problem. <laughs> and not the easiest problems at all. But still, for some level, it's the first problem in the contest. So basically you're given the statement here. Yeah. Uh, 
So basically, you have to write a pro program which uh, can take some integer, some test cases, and the test case is an integer, and so you have to process the array and do something, whatever. Uh, yeah, if you cannot understand this problem, then maybe you, you can go to CodeForce and take a look at easier ones. Hopefully, that's fine. Okay, so that's problem A, but still. So it should be easy. I can remove at most n over two elements, and I want the sum of all... Oh, also the elements are zeros and ones. That's important. Uh, okay. How do we solve this problem? N is even. Okay, that's important. Uh, okay, I can also make the font bigger. I know if it helps. Mm. Okay, so I think the solution is uh, split all the... We want the elements, like the sum of even po odd positions, even positions to be equal. Let's just split the array into chunks of four. I mean, we want to remove at most one half of the elements. And then, I, I don't know, like it's not the most logical idea, but you could try more, many of them. But if you have better intuition, you could just like uh, notice such things easily. But in general here, for example, we can pick every block of four numbers, and in any block of four numbers, we have at least two of them equal, right? And even if in every block of four numbers, we remove two numbers, then eventually, wow, okay. Okay, sorry about that. I dropped, I dropped you, yeah. Let you down. If we remove two numbers out of every four, then we remove the most n over two elements. So that's what we can do. Uh, so it's problem A. Let's go. So we have multiple test cases. We have n. Uh, what do we have to output, by the way? Uh, print the numbers, not the indices. Okay, cool. So let's form, also should I, oh wait, yep, um, should I also, hmm, I can do this for now, and comment edit contest, uh, this one. Yeah, I'm just warming up before the actual round, but this is the actual contest right now. Okay. So we just create the answer vector. We pick all quadruples. And if we have at least four numbers, then we just have to calculate the majority. For example, we can just uh, take the total. And if the total is at least two, then you have at least two ones. So we just pick two ones. And if it's not, then you have at least two zeros. So we just, just append two zeros. And in the end, we might have two more numbers remaining. And we have to erase at most one of them. And we just compare them. Basically not. Basically, if you have at least, uh, if uh, both numbers are ones, then we just uh, append two ones, and we are done. But if at least one of them is zero, we just append one zero, and again, I guess we are done. Yeah, then we output the size, and just output all the numbers. Is it correct? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, right now you can just talk in the chat. Right now I don't care about the being disturbed, so don't worry though. No, this is not correct. Why is it not? i plus 4 at most n. Oh, not n because, but the size of the output array. Sure, yeah, right now I'm up to discussing the problems. Uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Yeah, sure. Let's submit. Ah ha 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 ha. Nice problem name. Accepted. Nice. So I could also just make the vector all ones or all zeros. Okay. Yeah, that's. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's more trivial, right? Because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's easier. That's easier. Either n over two zeros or n over two plus maybe the remainder ones. Yeah, yeah, that's easier. Anyway, my solution was more local, but your solution is more global. Yeah, I guess the intended solution was a bit simpler, but still. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Anyway, let's read B. Uh, okay, so in this problem, I was I was trying to read the first paragraph. Just I, I was kind of not concentrated. I was just looking at it, just looking through it, and then it's something that I'm not sure I like. But it turns out that this paragraph is just totally irrelevant to the problem. So there is some backstory, but it, it just makes no connection with the problem. And so, if I just start started reading here, I would be better off, which is not great. Anyway, I have n positive integers, a1, a2, a n, using each of them exactly once. You have to make such sequences b1, b2, b n, that sequence c1, c2, c n is maximum where ci is the greatest common divisor of the first i elements of b. Uh, hey there. Yeah, so. Uh, exactly once, exactly once, okay. And we want just the sequence of GCDs to be as big as possible. So it means that we always have to start with the largest number, obviously, because the first number has to be as big as possible by the definition of lexicographical, uh, lexicographically larger. Mm, and then the next number, yeah, I mean, we can do it greedily. The sum is not, mm, so it, I guess the, what the problem asks us is just to, like the definition of lexicographically larger is exactly the first number has to be as large as possible then the second number and so on. And so I think that we just do it greedily. We just always pick the number that makes the, GC, the next uh, GCD as large as possible. Uh, A has a solution with removing at most one number. Oh, wow, that's, that's actually clever, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. It didn't occur to me. It's not the most obvious thing, but I can see why this is true. Mm. Also, actually, let me do... Maybe sh I should... Yeah, just a second. 
I think I should update the title. Maybe that's a good idea. Let me see. Okay. All right, so just greedy, just greedy. I will start with having one zero in the, let's say in the C array, just to make it easier not to consider any corner cases. Has the title of data. Okay. Uh, Serve for a couple of hiccups. I'm a bit not used to it, but surely will be better later. So we have all the integers not used, and we just go int best minus one. And. Uh, ID is also minus one. If not, use J and GCD of the last integer in C and this integer in A is greater than best, then sure. And ID is equal to J. And so we set used ID true and we push back GCD of uh, I have a question to the chat. I've I've encountered I've, I've encountered this a couple of times. So what do you think about this particular line of code? Do you think it's undefined behavior or not? Because here I'm using C back and then I'm push, pushing it back to C. So does it not get reallocated before I actually calculate this value? Because this question actually occurred to me a couple of times before and I'm not sure about the answer. Yeah, also I don't have to recalculate. Yeah, it's best, obviously. You're right. But still, I wonder about... about how legit it is. Okay, so we have some outputs, and uh, as far as I can see, they match it exactly. So let's just submit. Okay, good. Uh, problem C is interactive. Wow. It's okay, you think? Okay. Mm, I think that, yeah, it never failed me, but I'm just not sure about that. Uh, okay, so on problem C is interactive. C in division 2 as interactive is quite brutal, but yeah. Uh, we, hit you, we hit the permutation of length n consisting of the elements from 1 to n. We want to guess it. And we give two different indices, and they rely with pi modulo pj. And we have two n queries. Okay. What do I think about this problem? So first idea, obviously, is that if the uh, right operand of module operation, pj in this case, is... Uh, larger, then we are just out given pi, right? 
if pi is less than pj, then pi modulo pj is just equal to pi. I think back is evaluated before pushback, so value is stored in a temporary value resize. Mm -hmm. uh, might be. That makes sense. But... Okay. So if we could somehow find the biggest number, the, the position of value n, then in the next n minus 1 queries, we can just find all the remaining values. Right? So maybe we can somehow focus on finding the maximum value first. But how can we find it? Uh, oh, actually, I see, I see, I see. I, I think it's different. Yeah, my idea was maybe I can find, maybe if I can, if I can compare two integers, one to each other, and uh, this way, maybe if I can do it in one operation, this way maybe I can spend n queries to find the maximum, and then n queries to find each value uh, by using a query with this value and the maximum. But probably it's easier than that. Let's just focus on two numbers. We have one number, position i, second number, position j. And let's say we just make two queries, pij and ji. And uh, let's assume that pi is less than pj. Then pi modulo pj is equal to pi, but pj modulo pi is less than pi. And that means that in two operations, we can compare any two positions, any two values at any positions. And also, we can find the lowest value of two, right? We get the value of pi. So actually, yeah, we find the lowest value and we know which one this is. So I think the solution would be just Take the first two value, two elements and find make two queries. This way we will find the smaller value, pi or pj, whatever. And uh, we just put this number aside, pick the other one, and go to the next one. Like, basically, the process will be just pick any two values from the set which we don't know yet, do these operations, find the smaller one in two queries, and just erase it from the set and go like that. So I think that should be correct. Uh, let's try to implement it. So we have the integer n. And let's say that we have some position, which is i. And it will be, do I want to use one in the positions? OK, let's do one in the set once in a while. And also, we will have to find the final element eventually. But actually, yeah, the last element will be n, right? So it's easy. So, oh no, I don't like one index indexing, so let's go for zero indexing. It's just not good. If I use vectors, I will have to create a vector of size n plus 1 and not use the zeros position. It's just not clever. Okay. So we make a query like i... Uh, okay, let's make a function which will make queries for us. Uh, we don't have to make this function local, but we can. So we output and we have to use endl here so that we don't get idleness limit exceeded. Uh, and then we get the result and we just return it, right? So. Let's say that x is ask ij, and let's say that y is ask ji, or, or let's say that q query ij is that and query ji is that. So if query ij is less than query ji, what does it mean? Uh, or let's just even be as concise as possible because I don't care about time here. 
So if i mod j is less than j mod i, uh, let's say if it's bigger, if it's bigger, then it means that pi is less than pj. So we know that pi is equal to pi modulo pj. And we also can put i equal to j. Because now we know the position i, but the unknown position will be j now, from now on. And otherwise we have pi greater than pj, so we know that pj is equal to pj modulo pi. And we don't need to change the unknown position, because the unknown position is still i. So that's what we output here. Then we output uh, the answer, I guess. Yeah, and also the last unknown position will be n. The value will be n. Just because we can never learn it in these queries. So if i is greater than 0. No, here I can just output space and pi and endl and that's all, I think. Okay, so testing interactive problems is not easy, uh, but let's pick this test case. So we have 1, 3, 2. We, uh, yeah, here I have to output plus 1, plus 1 because the positions are one indexed in the, uh, yeah, whatever. So we, yeah, i plus 1, j plus 1, correct. Uh, 1, 2, so 1 modulus 3 is 1, 2, 1 is 0, as we can also see from the example test case. 2, 3, I have to calculate it's 1, and 3, 2 is 2, and we get 1, 3, 2. Okay, fine. I did not use uh, cout flush, but uh, if you use endl instead of, uh, so you can, you can use uh, backslash n, but you can also use endl, and endl is basically line break plus flush. So that's one reason why endl is actually slow in usual problems. But in interactive problems, it's just convenient, a convenient way to flush the output when you need it. So I use endl here and endl here. But in usual problems, I would just use backslash n because it's faster. But here I have to use endl. Okay, problem C solved. Uh, I don't know Terry Teo in person, I know about him. Uh, now we have two more problems. Can I do them quickly enough? Let's see. There are n skyscrapers, the height of the ice one is hi. We have set fire, not we. Some villains have set on fire the first n minus one of them, and the only safety is the nth one. That's a terrible story. Uh, so, so you mean that New York only has one skyscraper now, right? Not good. Uh, is there any lag? Hopefully, no. Let's call a jump from i to j discrete. If all skyscrapers between them are strictly higher or lower. So jump is discrete if they are neighboring ones or both of them are lower than all the skyscrapers between them or higher. And Vasya is staying on the first skyscraper and wants to live a little longer. That's cruel. So his goal is to reach end skyscraper with minimal count, minimal count of discrete jumps. Sure. And okay, so we need to reach the last skyscraper with S few jumps as possible. So I think the idea of this problem is pretty easy. Uh, let's say that, mm, 
Okay, let's say that we know all the pairs of skyscrapers that we can jump between. If we know all the pairs, like suppose we are not given like the heights, whatever, we're just given pairs that we can jump between. Then it's just uh, whatever shortest path algorithm. In this case, the jumps are all cost, have all cost, all have cost one. So we just can find the best, uh, the shortest path with uh, Brett's first search, PFS. And just simple queue. Uh, but that's what happens if we know all the pairs which can be connected with one jump. Uh, but we are not given those pairs, we are just given some heights. But I am pretty sure that the number of pairs is actually linear in terms of n. And if it's so, and if we can find all such pairs quickly, then we just do what I, saw, what I said before, just do BFS, right? And finding the pairs looks to be a, looks to be a pretty standard problem as well. And I think it can be done with a stack. Since we have two different conditions here, we will have to use two stacks. But uh, how did I guess of what? What was, I'm, I'm not sure, linear number of pairs? I think that's pretty much because I realized already, when I was saying that, I already realized that how I can find them. Be because like this structure, which is like, find all pairs such that all the numbers between them are strictly lower. Uh, yeah, but it's not linear, right? Yeah, it's not linear. Yeah, it's not linear, okay. Somehow, Stack, so stack is not working here, right, because, yeah, so for example, if you have some kind of, uh, this kind of line, so we have all of them decreasing and then all of them increasing, then you can actually jump from any skyscraper in the first part to any skyscraper in the second part. So it's not linear, actually, yeah, I was wrong. Uh, or maybe, let's think. Oh, we cannot jump from any to any, right? Because, yeah, we cannot jump from any to any, because the next one could be, yeah, the next one will uh, not, yeah, okay, 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 okay. So I think that one thing was that uh, when I said that I think it's not linear, I was thinking about the number of skyscrapers that can see each other, so that we just can connect, let's say we just uh, draw them on like the line, so we have a line of skyscrapers and they have some heights, so we just draw them like this and just try to connect their roofs. And we want to say that we can jump between two skyscrapers if their roofs can see each other, but that's not the case. So first, the number of pairs which can see each other is not linear, it could be square of n, but the number of pairs which can jump, which like can see each other under these conditions should be linear. Yeah, I mean, Let's just try to, I think, again, so again, so what I was saying before I stopped myself was that when I was saying that it should be linear, I just, I, I already had in mind the way to, to find the number of them. Uh, sorry, not the number of them, but the exact pairs. So I think that let's just go straight to building the pairs and after that, we can discuss. So first we have to do it in two different directions, right? So let's say that after the first try, we uh, will just negate all the heights. And we just do the same twice, but second time with heights negated. And we will just take care of one condition in one iteration of the outer for loop and the second condition in the second iteration. So, and here, let's find the, let's find all pairs such that uh, the maximum between them is lower than the minimum of them, of those two, okay? So this, like all these pairs can be just found with a stack. 
So let's maintain a stack. You can just use a vector for that. We can use stack int here, but stack is kind of fancy interface for vector. And I guess stack is more um, explicit, but I just like using vectors anyway. Uh, can you stream early? It depends on what early is in your time zone, but for now, I, I'm not sure. I think I will try to get some audience at pretty much the same time, but maybe I, I will vary the timing later. Uh, I do use tuple sometimes, so your <laughs> question is not the most valid one. Okay, so our stack will be the set of positions such that uh, their heights are are strictly decreasing, I think. So that's what I want to have. Because when I want to find the positions which we can jump to, all of them have to be decreasing, right? So we just go from left to right. And while the stack is not empty, and let's say that the last value in the stack is not higher than us. And again, so here the sign is not trivial. It's like, but again, if you just think about it more, you will understand why this has to be like less than or equal. Because if they are equal, I still want to eliminate the last element from the stack, right? Just because I want the conditions to be strictly greater, strictly greater, uh, it means that if the last element, if the last element of the stack and my next element, which I want to add to the stack, have a different sign, so it's less than or equal here, less than or equal here, that means I want to remove the last element from the stack before adding the current element. Mm. Yeah, so I have to remove that element and also I actually have to add an edge between the last element in the set and element i and I can pop back the last element. And finally, uh, if the stack is not empty, I also have to add the value between the last element and i, but then I will push back the i's element here. So I think that's how we do it. And adding an edge is just two vectors. Again, I'm using a local function, just not to repeat two lines, but that's not important and not necessary at all. Okay, so I think that should be correct. And then I want to go from zero um, so the problem says that we want to find the smallest amount of jumps and we can show that an answer always exists. But yeah, so it's kind of obvious that we can, <laughs> that the answer always exists because we can always jump to the next skyscraper. So we can jump one, two, three, and so on. So this is quite obvious, I would say. Um, and distance of zero is zero. And then we just go through all the neighbors of the next element in the queue, and if the distance to it is negative one, it means that we haven't reached it yet, so we put this value into the queue, and distance becomes the distance of the current element plus one, and we just put the distance of the last element, right? That's the basic BFS. Um, my computer is lagging already, but I think that the more I do some coding, the more it is lagging. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, it said that... Uh, okay. No, still not. What could be... What could those characters be? Let's save anyway. Oh, so this, mi this minus is... Which I copied from the statement is actually a dash, which is not a valid character. Okay, so here we have three. 
here we have one, here we have one, and here we have two. Let's try to submit. Wrong answer on test eight. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. So we can only jump from i to j if i is less than j. I have actually missed this line. I think I think that I felt like something like that could happen. I don't see any reason not to jump backwards. But for some reason I missed this condition here. So it means that. Uh, here I only can add from i to j, right? And I have to add from i to j. And the answer to the samples doesn't change, unfortunately. Because if they did, then I would have found the mistake earlier. <laughs> now it's 13 and I also see this question mark which is not promising. Hmm. Let's think. So if I have two, one, two, 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 one, two, one, one, oh, sorry, two, one, one, one again. Hmm. I would not, I would prefer not to take a look at the test case. Maybe I even cannot during virtual participation, but in any case. So we can only jump from left to right. It actually also, it means that we don't need any BFS, so we could just do some DP some easy DP on the uh, directed to cyclic graph, whatever. Uh, yeah. Oh, timely notification. Yeah, of course I'm doing, I'm getting an answer on purpose. Isn't that obvious? I just want you to think about what my mistake is together with me. For now I don't see it actually. Hmm. Hmm. Is this my first mistake you mean in my life? Apparently not. Hmm. Why would it not be correct? Oh, someone sees it, okay. I should also see it. Mm. Hmm. Oh, everyone sees it. Maybe you're just, maybe you're just trolling, right? Just teasing me. Um, okay, let me try to not to look at the chat and try to find it quickly. Can I? Hmm. 
h Hmm. Actually, we have to start Snark News series soon, but maybe we should finish this first. Hopefully we can finish it at least before 11 p.m. Mm. Actually, I have no idea for some reason. So, I mean, just to illustrate the way of trying to find mistakes on your own, I guess that's what I should do, is just implement the stupid solution and test against it. And this problem is pretty easy. Anyway. So let's just try to write a quadratic solution. Whatever. Or that, then we should also check. So it's so it's in. Yeah, it's in one hour. Okay. Mm, so if these conditions are satisfied. We can jump to j, so dpj is equal to minimum of dpj and dpi plus 1. And minimum is minimum of minimum and hi, hj. And maximum is maximum of mx and hj. Okay, and we output dp and minus 1. Maybe this is also incorrect in the same way, but then I have some troubles with understanding the problem in this case. Okay, and also let's do some, uh, no. Uh, let's use a higher number. And here maybe I want more equal numbers. Okay, so we generate the test case. We get 54 and 57. Okay, that's that means that we have a mistake most pro most probably <laughs> because we now have not only wrong answer but also our stupid solution gives a different answer and why could that be? Let's try to generate a smaller test case. That's the best idea here. Let's have them all have one digit and let's say n is really small. And now we want to find the small test case, but obviously we cannot take the first test case. We can just generate test cases until we have a bad test case. And here we go. Yeah, so what, what actually I, what I did was just run this script and actually it failed on test case like 10, yeah. Okay, so in this test case we output 3 and the correct answer is 4 because we cannot jump from... Yeah, obviously it's 1, 2, 3, 4 here. But why do I have not 4? Uh, let's output iteration i and j here and see what edges we have. So we have edges 0, 1, 
one, two, two, three, and one, three. That's correct. Three, four, four, five, and three, five is not correct. Okay, so I can see that I have an edge from three to five, but we uh, cannot jump from three to five because the three is the same height as three, right? That's the problem here. So to fix it, I think the way to fix it is that here we, uh, yeah, so for example, in test case like uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, right? What would happen is that, uh, why 5, 4? Yeah, like 8, 3, 3 is already a good test case, right? So uh, we cannot jump from 3 to 8 here, but since we pop back the value of 3, we add an extra edge. So I think that here we should only pop back only strictly smaller elements. And here we end, add an edge between the last element in the stack and the current element. But also if the height of the last element is equal to our height, let's pop it back here. And I think this way it should be correct. Now it's four. Uh, we can remove debugging and we can also try to generate larger test cases and see what happens now. So for some bigger test cases now we have equal outputs. So let's submit. Now I can read the chat. Hopefully. Yes, I can. Uh, uh, okay. I'm not sure if we have enough time for E, but let's see. Uh, spoiler, the issue is you cannot jump over an equally high element. Yes, I should. Yeah, alternatively, I, I shouldn't have done the if not stack is empty case if I popped an equal element. Okay. Mm. My vector is declared inside. Yes, it is declared inside, so I don't have to clear it. Yeah, the case 21111. Yes, correct. Mm. Okay. 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 So I'm not sure about different solutions. We only jump to some some set of positions. Only three far just jumps. Maybe it's correct, but I, I the proof. I'm not interested in proving it right now. Anyway. So uh, hopefully we can have enough time to at least look at problem E before the round. Let's just take a look. So we have a graph here. Okay. Yeah, I think the way I debugged the, the previous problem could be instructive in a way. And maybe if more people take a look at how I did that, maybe we can get less questions and less blog posts like, I cannot find a bug in my solution, can you please help? Just because you can see that it's not that easy. Uh, sorry, it's not that hard, of course, to try to find the mistake yourself. Okay, Yegor is a legendary grandmaster at Code Forces, but also a famous Russian singer, rapper, actor, and blogger, as we now learn. And cities, M roads, no conditions. We have an arbitrary directed graph. Igor will arrive at city one, travel to city n, give a concert, and fly away.
Okay. A lot of haters and two annoying friends, so we can only travel by safe road. Two types of roads, black and white. Black roads are safe at night and white roads in the morning. I would love to see roads that are safe at night and not in the morning. Maybe, yeah, maybe if you have some fans which are only, only there in the morning. So, if the road is dark, maybe. Okay. We need to make a schedule or a schedule, whichever you prefer. For each city, we'll specify its color. And then if we visit some city, the only time we can live is determined by the city's color. Night if it's black, and morning if it's white. And after that we choose an available path and we want it to be as short as possible. But manager likes Nikistan very much and wants to stay here as long as possible. Uh, I take so much time to implement brute force usually because we are sometimes backtracking. In many cases, even backtracking is not that scary, so I think that you should not be afraid of that, but yeah. In some cases, obviously, brute force solution might take more time than your uh, fast solution. So maybe in those cases, it would be better to just try to find the mistake on your own, maybe testing some small test cases by hand or... Uh, trying to read the problem, think about the solution again, but if you're stuck, then brute force solution is definitely a good way. Uh, ask you to make such schedule that there would be no pass from one to n, or the shortest pass length would be greatest possible. Passes one C or a sequence of rows, I did every row, excluding the first one. A pass is one city. I mean, I just don't see any reason to make n equal to one in this problem. I, if, I, if I was setting this problem, I would definitely just say that n is at least 2, just because this corner case makes no sense, and it also cost us like 3 words in the problem. <laughs> um, the city this road goes from is equal to the city previous road goes into, nor can move only around past consider safe rows only. Uh, the pass length is equal to the number of roads in it, and the shortest pass in graph is a pass with the smallest length. Thank you. That's very helpful. Why is it written here and not in the notes section? Well, okay, why not? We have nm, number of seats, number of roads, and we have some types. And we output the length of the pass and then a sequence. Okay. Um, Zero, one, one, okay, one, one, zero, one. And here we also have a road from a city to itself, because why not, right? And here we just set all ones and we can get to city five, because the only roads to city five have zeros on their type. Okay, so the problem is we want so we have a graph and we want to choose for each city the like we have for each vertex we have some outgoing edges which can be black and which can be white and for each city we want to choose only black edges outgoing or only white edges outgoing and we want to choose one color for each vertex so that the shortest pass from 1 to n is as long as possible is that the correct problem statement, by the way? Maybe anyone can confirm, just so that, that I don't make any reading mistakes, which would be sad, because I have to finish soon and do another contest. Yeah, I am setting the colors of the city. So for each city, out of all the outgoing edges, I pick only the black ones or only the white ones. So alternatively, I can say that I remove all the black ones or remove all, all the right ones, all the white ones. And I want to maximize the length of the shortest pass. Okay. And the graph is arbitrary, as we can see here. Okay. Um, so what I think about this problem.
so I think that the so I guess I can I have to go from the finished city to the starting city somewhat backwards and uh, I want to find the distances for cities in this order So I think it should be similar to the extra algorithm, but just going backwards. So let's say that we initially we know that the distance for, for the last city is going to be zero. So we just know that so the distance is zero. And we know that. And then for all the... Okay, I guess... <laughs> I think it's quite clear. I guess I should try to go in straight into implementing and then try to figure out the details on the go. Uh, so I think I want... I, I just want to... Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to uh, have the array backwards, have the graph backwards, have the all the edges going from finish to start, whatever. So I will maintain the graph as usual in vector vector. And here I'll have pairs because uh, I want not only to save the vertex where I go, and but also the its type. And for the second vertex, I save the first word vertex of the edge and the type of the edge, right? Um, yes, and I want actually to have a, let's say infinity is one billion again. And I want to, usually in the extra algorithm, you want to have some kind of one distance for each vertex. But here I want to have uh, okay, whatever. I want to have two distances for each vertex. So the first distance will be if I only use the white edges from this vertex, and the second will be if I only use the black edges for this vertex. Okay? And... I think that I... Maybe I can actually solve the problem in a neat way by just duplicating all vertices and building some kind of a graph with two n vertices and just running some shortest pass on that graph. But I'm not sure about that. And I think I will just go with the way I see it. And the way I see it is save all the distances. Uh, so let's maintain two distances for each vertex. And let's have a set of some pairs, and the set of pairs will be just as usual in the extra algorithm, and initially we'll just output distance and zero. And we will assume that the distance for a vertex is the maximum of two distances saved for this vertex. So then we do like usual. We take the... Oh, I have to save distance first and then the vertex. So the vertex ID is second here. I take the vertex and I go through all the edges. Uh, so the vertex is the first, the type is the second. Um, well, let's also save the distance here because why not? Uh, this must be Let's let's just make an assertion. 
uh, this distance d must be equal to maximum of distance i0 and distance i1. That's what I think. So the distance for j and type, uh, let's say it's minimal of distance j type and d plus 1. Because I think that should be correct. Yeah, I'm not so sure about my but about my approach, but let's see. Also, some people prefer using using priority queue instead of set in their DX algorithm, but I generally prefer set, even though it's slower sometimes. Uh, so I think this way maybe. And then for each vertex, I can just de decide if distance of zero is greater than just use zero, otherwise use one, maybe like this. Let's see. Uh, so this is incorrect because, yeah, because it's not pair. Let's say it's vector of two values. Also array. Some people use array, right? So maybe I should use array. And here I can I can do this maybe. But I usually never use arrays of STL C++. Uh, attempt to erase from container. Yeah, because... Uh, I only want to erase if I can find it. Two zero one one looks good yet, and this does not look good. Oh, and then okay, 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 okay. Mm, so I think that I should fix. Um, So first of all, I have to do it only if d plus 1 is smaller than distance of j and type, right? Obviously. And if I do it, then probably I will have no troubles with going too slow. Okay. Well, it matches. Even though the problem allows different answers to each test case, it matches exactly the the answer. Okay. All good. I have not explained my solution to this problem properly, but at least I could solve it. Uh, yeah, pairs cannot be accessed with zero and one. Yeah, I, I mixed it out, mixed it in my mind. Uh, Writing out first and second is annoying sometimes. I'll change the vector of pairs to vector of vector. Okay, I, I change it to array. Is array int2 same as int a2? Same, but some similar, but some perks. Yeah, right. Also have to mark the problem as solved. Hmm. What metal would you get in IMO? IMO is pretty different from IOI. Hopefully at least some metal. But hopefully, I, I was doing mass Olympiads for my two last uh, classes of my school, seriously. But eventually I did not get the opportunity to go to both IOI and IMO the same year. So I only had to stick with IOI. Mm. Exactly 10 minutes, maybe. Uh, okay, you can take a look at how many people actually beat us badly today. Kevin solved everything in 25 minutes. That's more impressive, right, than what I did, obviously. And we are at 15th place. Okay. 
we also have some nice guys solving all the problem, the last four problems in four minutes, and the first one in one minute. That's impressive. Um, okay, so kudos to the winners, especially Kevin. His performance is great in this contest. We were not that fast, but I guess I spent quite a lot of time. And still, I think, yeah, if I made the bug in D, I would not be competitive anyway. So whatever. All right, so that was it for the for the code for this round. So what do you think about this format? I was not announcing it. And I wasn't actually planning it, but given that the Richter ended his stream earlier than I was planning to start, I decided to jump in. And the thing is, for example, the next round is going to happen on the 12th of September. It's in three days. So yeah, once again, I, I won't be able to do it right after, but maybe on 14th, after the education round, I can do a stream of these two rounds, maybe. If uh, people like that format, then I would definitely consider that. And maybe then I can announce that in the round, under the round announcement, and then more people can get here, if they like. Mm. So yeah, I, I think I will announce the eventual decision on this round. I, I, I'm pretty sure I will try to stream on 14th. So 14th, right after the contest, it will be, let's see. So it's 70.35 Moscow time, right? So maybe at 8 p.m. I can tune in. Uh, doesn't look like Division 1 rounds are upcoming. Yeah, the next one is planned on 27th of September, but for streaming, I would expect that Division 2 rounds are better, just because I cannot stream round Division 1 round. I can do them... If I cannot do Division 1 rounds during the actual time, then I can stream it later. But if I can, then I would prefer to do it competitively. So, yeah. And also, I think the Division 1 rounds should be less watchable on stream, just because I will, again, like, similar what, to what I said two days ago about the IOI stream and whatever five-hour format is, most of the time I would just be standing next to my wall, just banging my head, and that would not be as watchable. No, maybe, maybe, maybe fun for someone anyway. All right, so let's prepare for the next contest. Yeah, I think I, I will mostly do the division two for in, for this format. Um, maybe I can make a deal with Code Force so I can stream virtual division one afterwards, but get official place and rating. I don't think so. I, first of all, hacks. Maybe I can. <laughs> except to make no hacks, but the most important thing is that uh, people not seeing me in the standings, it also gives me advantage. If I, for example, solve problem E on minute 14, like some people did last time, that, would, that, that gave a lot of information to others. So if people don't see me in the standings, and then if I, it turns out that I actually solved the problem E in the first 10 minutes, but no one could see it because I did it afterwards, it would not be fair. All right. Um. Okay. And also title. Let me check actually how to do it. Um, I'm going to start in 5-10 minutes, 
start the next contest. And also the last one for today. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Status, okay. Status. Uh, snark new series round five. Right? Okay. Looks good to me. Uh, does Snark News not care this contest is being streamed? I specifically asked him and he allowed to do this in the last hour. And yeah, I don't think this contest is important enough to not to be taken much care about not like leaking the problems a bit too early and stuff. Okay, I'll be back in a couple of minutes and we'll go.
hello again. And today we are starting a bit later, but at the same time a bit earlier, because I've already done code forces around 669 on this stream, and now I'm going to do Snark News Summer Series round 5. So let me see if I can switch on the timer. Okay. I started programming at around 7, but again, yeah, you can find it in the wiki, I guess. Alright, let's start in one minute, maybe in two, 22.35. Our birthday in, is on the same day. OMG. OMG indeed. Um. Uh. Duration. Okay. There was no desire to go to study abroad. I suppose so. Uh, thanks to Major Gaming. Okay. Let's start in 20 seconds. I guess I'm ready. Mm, yeah, I think we are all ready to go. In 4, 3, 2, 1, go. And we also have to update this now, right? Yes, and now we can also have the timer. How cool is that? Uh, this one does not look nice, also because we have coordinates of geometry. This one is short. Uh, the current number is a positive integer in decimal. A number is considered legal if there is at least one group. <laughs> From t consecutive digits in which there are two identical digits. For example, 232. Is a five regular number. And you want to find out how many cards from a given range are not k regular. Okay, this one should be at least standard. Thank you. 
Um, but what do you want to save? So it should be digit dynamic programming, obviously. And we want to save the last k minus one digits, right? Is that true? I think so. Uh, it's a bit annoying, I would say. Maybe I should find an easier problem first, just because this one is definitely easy, but maybe I can find a, a, an easier one. Mm, okay, so A and B at the same distance from the city center, but not on the circle. Yeah, okay, this condition is clear. And you want to find the point Z, which is the total distance is minimal. What? Also, why? This looks like an easy geometry problem, but... Okay, F. Everyone is somehow much faster than me finding the easy problems in the last rounds. I'm not sure why. Maybe because this is not a valid English statement. I mean sentence, but statement as well. Okay, I guess this is easy, so just do what, what is written here, right? Well, not exactly, but... Mm. Okay, so the first... <laughs> nine, 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 thank you. Amazing. Mm, I think there are a lot of ways to implement this problem. Maybe I should not be thinking about the implementation too hard. So is it actually five nines, right? Okay. Uh, let's just do an array.
Well, I think this way is correct. Just go from left to right and for each position just whenever we get to some person with car sharing, just use for people from before and just make them not take a taxi, right? Uh, problem B, okay. Maybe try and whatever. So I can remember the last four digits, right? The last K minus one digits. And I go to the next digit, I want it to not be equal to either of the first four. That actually means that mm, I still have to remember the order, right? Yeah. So I just remember the last four digits. I want it not to be equal to any of those. And then I just go to the next DP state, right? So maybe I should finish this. Okay, it's obviously integer. All right. Our first step to get in top 26 today. So I have this number. Um, I also have to remember if it started or not, or when, or why. Um, yeah. Why am I named differently again? Oh, I guess I know why. I probably registered for the contest before I changed it, even though I didn't want to change it. Whatever. How to implement it in five minutes? I don't know. Remember the last four digits, right? Thirty test cases. I mean, I can just go whatever very <sighs> Twenty digits. I guess I can remember the flag if it's smaller or not. I can remember the last four digits at most, and maybe I should also remember how many of them are actually legit digits. At most four. Doesn't make much sense. How much is that, by the way? 20 times 2 times 10,000 times 5 times 10 times 30. No, not that's not that enough. Mm. Not that, I mean, enough, maybe. I should focus. If we 
with zero continue. Oof, I don't like it at all. But I don't see a much easier way. Yeah, I don't think many people can follow what I'm doing, but I'm just <laughs> a bit hold by this problem. I might explain this later or not. Just don't mind. Don't worry if it's not making any sense because it's 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 fine. <laughs> Maybe it's working at least. Hopefully not time limit exceeded. Okay. Uh, solve D. All right. Yeah, D. Okay, okay. Maybe D should be solvable, obviously. So you have two word two points inside the circle A and B. Okay, B is fast enough. Cool. Oof, that was harder than I expected. Um, maybe it's fine. So D, we have two points inside the circle at the same distance from the center. And we want to find the point on the circle. Right? So that it's not, some of this is easy. So should it be just like the center of the, is it? Eight, eight, zero, zero minus eight. So what's that? It is, okay. I mean, it has to be like that. So yeah, this part of the stream is definitely more boring than the previous one. Just because the problems are not... 
explainable in two seconds. Also, I have no geometry library as everyone knows now. No, but it doesn't have to be the middle position, right? Because that would make the distance too big. We could definitely use some kind of turn research, but it's too slow because the number of test cases is too high. Then what? What what do we do otherwise? Maybe I should read different problems. Oh, this problem is about tourists. Yeah, I should read it, definitely. For tourists, so nice. The tourist, I like that, totally. A sequence of n numbers from 1 to n, is number, specified number of the attraction to which the tourist will be transported from ice side. And tourists arrive at their attraction, after which they begin to use scooters with an autopilot. After k minutes, the tourist must gain each tourist must each tourist. What do you mean? Do you mean there are more than one more than one and tourists? What? How how is it possible? I imagined there could only be one. Okay, so we want to split our, uh, we want to count permutations such that each s a loop, what, it's a cycle, right? Each cycle in the permutation, the length of each cycle in the permutation is a divisor of k. So obviously I can do it in n squared time, right? And obviously I can do it in n times the number of divisor times, right? Um, mm, so one problem is how to find some... Since the module can be not prime, it's not easy to find the combination numbers. I can do it in n square, obviously, but I don't want to, maybe. But it should be a simple dp, which is just f of n, I just loop over the length of the cycle which contains the first point and I have to multiply by combination number here. Is it easy to figure out how to find those numbers? I think what I will do is just n square because 30,000 is not much. It's a bit of a cheating but I think it should be fine. This way is fine. Uh, 
and it's fine. Count, right? I think this should be the correct way to recalculate the line of Pascal triangle. Oh, it has to be over divisor minus one. This way. Let's see. Examples are not actually amazing, but two. Two is not correct. Seven. Okay, two. Why is why do I get two? Oh. oh, because it's not combination numbers. Ah, uh, whatever. I have done it anyway. I think I should not... Uh, I should not... Like, the easiest way to fix it would be just to do... Just to make an additional number. But maybe... Yeah, I guess this fact allows to do stuff faster than n square, but I think it's fine. Pretty sure n square is fast enough here. 3, 9, and 8, 4, 0, 1, and 30,000, 30,000, let's see, and just to be sure, and also my laptop is not fast enough, right? Right now, at least. Um, okay, someone was asking what problem as x is. Let me just show you then. So I can just do something like this. Um, so this is just my solution without taking any input. Just for the last for the biggest test case. And I can see the running time on this test case here. 1.9 <laughs> Um, YOLO, I guess. <laughs> well, 30,000 is maybe not the worst number, but I think that the main uh, time, like the main, the biggest problem of my running time is the n-square loop. And this is the same for any k. So, let's try. <laughs> Might be. Oh, no. No, no, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird, whatever. Um, let's just submit. No. <laughs> How much courage would it take to submit this blindly? That would be fun. Okay, so Yegor solved C. Come on, it was 1.9, I saw it. Stop it, you. Mm, disgusting. OK. 
Okay. Let's do a proper way then. The proper way is to know that this coefficient is equal to factorial of i minus 1 minus uh, over factorial of i minus uh, divisor this j. That's the proper way. But I cannot divide. But I can find the product on a segment. So I can do segment 3, which is boring. I can do uh, some different data structure, which is also a bit boring. What else can I do? I can just submit my solution five times and hoping it will be fast enough. Uh, at least once, but probably shouldn't. Hmm. Mm, segment 3 is so boring, but ah, probably the best way, sadly, at least the easiest to implement. And here I don't need anything, so it's just... I don't need saved here. I make a segment 3 of size n plus 1. No, of size n, of course. Ah, uh, whatever. Why not n plus 1, right? Let's write i to some position. To position i. And here just multiply by segment three dot get. Interesting. Uh, dot product. Yeah, now it's faster, but so boring. Can't help. Okay, 3 on D, 0, 0. I also have time to mark this as red. While it's still red, and also I can write X as red, but I won't. Okay, how to solve D? Find the best point. Looks to be an easy problem, but I just, I guess it should be easy if you know some geometry. This is not, still not so fast. Not great. But obviously I don't need to use segment 3 inside, so I, I guess it should be possible in just n. Because like you can do a data structure which just outputs the product in uh, constant time. But, yeah, I guess I would have had to implement it too if it, this was too far, too slow, but still. Um, but there is, at least there is such, such data structure, some kind of divide and conquer stuff. Mm. Plus one, plus one, plus three, okay. Should I finally draw a circle? Maybe it helps. I have this strange idea.
I mean, how does the distance change as I go around the circle? How does the sum of distances change? Actually, actually the sum of distances, what, what like what is like the the place of points with the with a fixed sum of distance to two points is an ellipse, right? So basically, if I take an ellipse of uh, I don't know the term, but I can just increase its sum of distances until it intersects with the circle. Uh, I mean, touches. But how do I find? How do I easily find when an ellipse touches the circle? But due to symmetry, it should be. Not sure, not sure. And again, it seems like binary search is not the option, but maybe it should be. I guess one binary search should not be too bad. Can I just, I mean, I feel like that actually maybe ternary search could also be fine, at least. I think. But I, I don't feel like trying it. Maybe let's read the rest of the problems, at least, to know what's happening. Uh, H bus roots, i of which is in demand AI. Okay. Well, a W types of houses, i of which are common. Okay. AI. What can you? Come up with to justify the strange setup, right? O roots with i to j added the number v. Cheapest fare for roots with x. By y inclusive. The most expensive. Ah. So we have to erase. <clears throat> I mean, you have to find the smallest product of range times range, the, the largest product, and also the number of products. Is that it? And this, in this case, is it just whatever two segment trees which maintain the minimum and the maximum? And the number of those? Because obviously I only need those. Isn't it like obvious? Also, a corner case is that if I have zero somewhere, yeah, zeros are quite nasty corner cases. But overall, it's not too bad, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, zeros are nasty, but other than that, it should be just straightforward, I think. Let's figure out how to handle zeros afterwards.
ij why ij i guess why not this is called c for some reason but also why not okay i think that minimum and maximum are quite similar but I definitely have to be careful. Let's just do this, I think. Whatever. Just leave it as is. Should be fine. If it works, it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this test case is easy, but what if we don't get zeros I mean no what if I do get zeros that's the bad thing right mm. how do I figure out what to do with them easily Okay, so what I mean is, so operation 3 is find the smallest, otherwise find the largest. Okay, so if I want to find the smallest, but I mean, I don't care. Mm. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So one thing would be if actually minimum is equal to maximum, then I think that I want to erase the count of maximums just not to double count. So now I mean I don't need to care about what I have, but um, I might need to care about the total size of the array, but I don't need to care about like in general about the counts. So let's just Minimum is equal to minimum of, let's say minimum of, uh, minimum times minimum, minimum times maximum, maximum times minimum, and maximum times maximum. Just because it should be correct. And this is, should also be correct. And just let's count both and output the required ones. So here I should get the 840, negative 752, and 840, and zeros as second numbers, I guess. All right. But how do I... Also, this should be long one, and uh, maybe I want also to have this equal to long long, just to not forget about overflows. I don't like the my, my approach really.
But I think that's... Uh, no, I don't like it at all. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, so one idea I have is that maybe I don't want to count both. Maybe if I want to find maximum, let's just negate one of the arrays. Okay. And then eventually we just output negative. I think that this is fine. Okay, and also here maybe I don't want this line. But I want this, and if value is smaller than minimum, then minimum is equal to value, and count is, and count of minimums is equal to zero, and if the value is equal to minimum, then I just add the count to the minimum count. All right. And I can update. four times. And again, important not to mix anything up in copy-paste. Hopefully I didn't. So it might work for this test case. And let's make a different test case, which would be, let's say, seven times eight And one query. <clears throat> Something like that. And one query, which is minimum from 1 to 7 and 1 to 8. Um, yeah, so I say there are 32 zeros. But it's not the case. I actually have 56 minus 24. It is 24, but why? Oh, I see why. But if I do this way, then I suddenly get a different number of zeros, but it's definitely incorrect. Mm. I don't like the camera angle somehow. Has it changed? Whatever. So I think that if minimum is equal to zero, I have to just be careful. If it's not zero, then I think it, I, I'm fine. Maybe one one. Um, okay. I think this way. So everything with a zero is a product zero. But if we 
we get both zeros, we have double counted that, so we just subtract, I think. We'll see how far I am. Zero out of five, four out of 16, sure. And zero out of zero, but maybe I should read problem A, actually. Oh, I have two geometry problems left, right? No. Also E. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, have I messed something up again? Probably. I don't like this code at all. <clears throat> I have to say. So let's just check, just to be sure. So if I have all zeros, I do get 56, do I? I do. And if I have this, I also get 56. If I get this, then I get 48. And if I swap, then I get 42. Looks correct to me. This is negative 56, and this is negative 56 again, but if I want maximum, then I have 42 maximums equal to zero. Oh, have I actually? Yeah, I actually have overflow. It's disgusting. Because I took care about, okay. I took care about the count values, but didn't take care about the actual values. I saw that they are at most 1000, but the total could be higher. Maybe that's not the problem, by the way, because I only have, I have an answer on a small test case, but I don't think I want to wait on resubmission. Okay, let's read A and then decide what to do. Okay, I expected that. Let's mark it as red. The left three nine two nine three nine two nine. Okay. Looks weird to me.
Okay, this is not geometry at all, but this is some nasty BFS. I guess. Twelve seconds. I think I should focus on D and E. Most likely. Okay, Google, what do I know about ellipse? Mm, nope. Okay, at least this ellipse. Maybe in English? Maybe I should not be fixing my camera during the contest, but I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's fine. Hmm. What can I do? What should I do? I guess I'm not solving A. Pretty sure about that. But I should be solving D and E. Okay, let me take
Okay, so I, I'm obviously too weak to solve problem D properly, but I guess I have to try turn research at least. Just because I don't know what to, what else to do. I can also make a brute force solution to problem E. Just like I did, did for code force round, but I don't feel like that. Maybe I should, but maybe later. If I have time. Okay. Um, okay, so I want to rotate the picture. So let's say I have the center of the circle. Then I have some h, the distance, the vertical distance to the points. Also, it's, if it's vertical, then it should be v, right? And the horizontal distance is something like this. No, not r. D times D, times V times V, so D is the distance to a point. Okay, so the points are now V, H and, sorry, H, V and negative H, V. And I just want to find the best angle. I guess I shouldn't care. And I'm not sure about precision here, but but I'm mostly concerned about speed, but whatever. I don't need square root here, I can only have it here. Oh no, I don't need it. I don't need it. Um, this one should be the same, but I have plus here. And let's say it's this. Much appreciated answer. Okay. This is five. Um okay. Yeah, look slow.
I would expect cosine sine to be the slowest here. What if I have it from zero to R and then this is that and and this is this. Is this one faster? Square, root are all, square roots are also not quick, but at least faster than that. Yeah. And now about the number of iterations. Oh, it's dirty. But whatever. Mm, can I make it without so many square roots? Maybe not. And again, I can try to uh, just submit to problem X, maybe. No, problem X. But I'm not sure I even have a chance to squeeze it in, but we'll see. So time limit is three seconds. Uh, Two point nineteen plus reading time. I guess it should be fine. So let's submit then. Maybe it also depends on the test case, unfortunately, but. Let's try anyway. I don't have much to lose. Two point nine. Easy. Whatever. Oh, two minutes. Okay. So someone solved E. Eric solved E in one hour. Mm. Suspicious. Okay. Let's quickly try to take a look at the Russian. Statement just to make sure I haven't missed. I guess I cannot be sure, but. Looks, it looks correct. Mm. I might have some typo, obviously.
This looks correct. Yeah, I think I, I, I don't have time to stress test it anyway. I have four minutes. So I just have to read the code carefully. Is this suspicious? I don't think so. I don't see why. Like test case 3 has to be a simple test case. It just has to. Yeah. Hmm. I have no idea what I'm overlooking. Can I fix anything at all and just make a random submission? Doesn't look good. Hi, JC. Yeah, it looks good to me. Weird stuff. You know what people do? But I'm pretty sure. Makes no difference. Was it submitted? No, it was not. Okay. Whatever. 
Yeah, the finish was pretty depressing. I just couldn't figure out the problem. I just don't see what happened. Oh, so we are at fours. At least four is not less, not greater than 26. So, yeah. Uh, like... Yeah, well done, Igor. If if under finally you mean you finally placed above me, then yeah. I might double count the optimum, so I think that I took care of this case in here. So if the minimum is is equal to maximum, I just send them set the maximum count to zero. Ah, oh, we shouldn't use W and H, we should use query W and query H. Yes, you are, you are right. That's, I mean, I, I, love, I, I love having such teammates. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Boris. Don't bother Russian is also unreadable. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Oof. Uh, okay, let me read the chat. Okay, E is now accepted, yes. Oof. Stupid bug. But all bugs are stupid, right? So it's fine. Uh, yeah, teamwork, all right. Oh, so if we actually solved E, then if we solved it at the last minute, we would beat Yegor and we would place third. If I didn't make that bug in the first place, I could take second, maybe, if I didn't have any incorrect attempts, I could have beat with an Omnic, and then to beat Kevin, it would take me to not make a bug in E and maybe submit D blindly, which I would never do in these circum circumstances. So, yeah, I guess well done to Kevin. Good job. Mm, well played. Let's see. Yes, so Andrew asked if I took care about the one distinct value. Yes, I think th this part was here. Uh, so I just set the count of maximums to zero, so it's just like a hack, but still. And yeah, and Eric asked about W and H. Yes, I guess he actually meant the same thing here, that I used W and H and I should have used the length of the query interval and not just W from the initial. Yeah, so I guess Eric meant the same thing. Mm, Kevin is doing really great for some time now. Yeah, that's very true. I think he's also very close to being top rated at Code Forces. Code Forces, isn't he? Let's check. Kevin is top six, but he is like 
150 points below the top one. So I, I would really expect Kevin, I would hope that Kevin could take first at some point. Let's all be rooting for that. All right. Yeah, so, so this part was no... Yeah, go, go, Kevin. Yes, yes, yes. So the top two are rooting for Kevin. Uh, now we only need top three, top four, and top five to also be rooting for Kevin, and that's how we can do it, guys. So today was not the greatest day. Well, actually, the first part was fine. The Division two part was fine. Then maybe I got a bit tired and did not perform too well, but maybe the contest was not very suitable anyway. Uh, so what do the, a, a, any thoughts guys you have before we discuss the problems? I mean, we are also, yeah, how to solve A, maybe, maybe I could think about this one. So, I mean, it has to be some kind of BFS, just like, just uh, the points are the neighbors of the dampers. And you have to... For each horizontal and vertical line, you just create some edges. So, it's a bit similar to problem D from Division 2 contest. I did yesterday, I did today. I just find the, like for each cell, I find the, I, I can go straight up and straight down and stuff. Uh, are the queries in E add to AJ in range, add to BJ in range, maximum AJ? Yes, so uh, Ildar mentioned it correctly, so yes, it's the minimum of the so imagine we have a two-dimensional matrix of numbers so it's h times w and uh, let's say that the cell in the i's row and j's column has value a i times b j and the queries are change values of a in some range change values of b in some range or find the maximum or minimum in a sub-matrix of the matrix, of the whole matrix. I mean, we are given a sub-matrix and we want to find the maximum and minimum. That was what the problem was asking. And it turns out that we only need to know about the minimum and maximum values of A in the given range and also their counts, and then we can only from that information count the result in constant time. But we have to take care about the zero case and I actually took care of it correctly, but not correctly enough. That was problem D. Uh, so what about problem D? Can anyone of you guys tell me how to solve it? Are there any, I mean, there must be constant time solutions. I am just sure about that. But did everyone just go for turn research? By what everyone was discussing, it seems they all did ternary. Said. Accepted with 16 iterations. There is some geometric inversion. I was trying to... Mm, yeah, so actually one thing in this contest was that I... I think that in different circumstances I would just maybe go for ternary straight away, just not even trying to come up with constant time solution. And I'm not sure why I was actually trying that. Maybe I, I just felt like going for a cleaner solution mm, for a better one. 
but I guess there's no need in general. From from a practical point of view, I would I should just go for the first idea, and then if it doesn't work, then maybe fix it. Inversion, you say? Mm, okay, I'm not sure. I am willing to figure out it right now, but mm, maybe can I? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's the show. Just I, I, I was just trying to solve D for the content. To solve D in constant time for the content. But unfortunately, no content. And also, I wasted, wasted time on that. Yes, exactly. As in inversion around the point. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure that's what Amnik meant. I don't think there's any inversion. Any different meaning. Hmm, 16 iterations is accepted, okay. But then, you, like, the crucial thing for me to make it fast enough was to use uh, turn research on X and not on the angle, right? Just because otherwise it cosines and sines are too slow. So I guess this is crucial. Maybe if we do 16 iterations, then it's still fine. Omnic, nice video of round 669. Oh, so we also did it. Cool. The idea to use inversion in problems about length sounds weird. Well, yes, if you consider this as a problem of minimizing the total length, then yes, but I kind of consider this problem as you want to build an ellipse on the given two points, which touches the given circle and the smallest ellipse with the fo 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 with focus in one point and the other point. What do ellipses invert to? That's also a good question. I, I, I have no idea. I'm not... good with such type of things. But maybe if you want just it to be touching, then like if it was the smallest circle, then it's like, I don't know, just make a tangent, but I don't know. The center of the circle is pretty unrelated to, this, to the center of the inverted ver version of the circle. Yeah, it's kind of unrelated. Maybe we abuse the fact that the center is on the the sector between the flossing. How, how does it, how does it, how is this word pronounced? I have to check. Foci. Yeah, the sector is on the B sector between the foci. That's correct. The inversion doesn't seem. Yeah, sounds almost like hawk eye. But who said it should be foci? Fo, fo, and ha. Okay. Oof. Also, Igor, how did you solve B in five minutes? I'm not that good. Maybe just want to find all the points where the angles are equal. Uh, which angles? <laughs> Amnik says that he is usually doing this contest first and not last like me to try and fix any bugs and statements so the tourist can use Google Translate and not rage quit after that. Thank you, I appreciate it a lot. I think I told about my number iteration method a gazillion of times. Um, mm, I guess I missed your 
explanation. I'll have to check it out later. In B, you also don't need to store last k digits, you just can know that they are all different. What does it mean? I don't need to store them. Don't I? Well, I guess, again, okay, I guess the, the iterator you mean, okay, I, maybe I, I figure out now. So I guess the iterator Igor means is that if we are given a range, like find the number of numbers from 1 to n with some, uh, with some condition, under some condition, then I guess we can split this array, like this range into some smaller ranges where each range has some prefix, fixed prefix, and then the suffix can be any digits, right? And if we just split this range into smaller ranges, there will be a linear number of them. We are talking about B. There will be a linear number of such ranges, and for each range we can just easily find the number uh, just because, just, just, just some multi easy multiplication, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess DP approach is harder in this problem. Just because it has to account for some things. Solving an aligned range in constant time isn't always trivial, isn't it? I think this problem is quite trivial. So let's check. So in problem B, Okay, so first idea is that uh, split one n into some ranges like uh, digit, 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 whatever. Uh, like, let's say uh, some digits, digit, 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 zeros, digits, nines, right? So we just split the range into such smaller ranges. And then if you have a range like digits and then some wild cards, let's say digit one, digit two, digit three, digit four, wild card, wild card, wild card, right? So we need to check that we don't have two equal digits closer to each other than K, right? If we have then for this range, the answer is just zero. Otherwise, for each digit, the number of ways to Decided is just uh, ten minus the number of minus the number of preceding digits or k minus one, whichever is smaller, right? So we just multiply some easy things. So for example, uh, let's say that we have uh, let's say we have, that we have only two digits. So first, uh, make sure that digit one is not equal to digit two, otherwise answer is equal to, to, to zero. Uh, and let's say k is equal to five, so we don't, we cannot have two equal digits in groups of five. So for digit three, we have digit three, we have ten minus two, eight options. For digit four, we have seven options. For digit five, we have six options. For digit six, we have six options again because digit one does not influence us around now, and then we have six options again. So we just multiply this, these numbers. Is that correct? I think that's the solution to be. If we can split the one n into ranges of this kind, then the solution is just add some products. Is it what you had, Igor? It looks correct to me. Yeah, in some problems it, it's not easy to solve an aligned range, but in this problem it's just very easy. Okay, Igor sent me his code in private message. And it's exactly the same, yeah, the same idea. I can... Maybe, yeah, I can share it here. So here's the solution of figure in Java. So 
So it's just iterate, which does some magic, which gives you the prefix and the remaining, like the number of remaining digits, I guess. And then you just take all the digits, check that we don't have two equal digits too close, and then multiply stuff and add it. Yeah, so that's the, the best solution. I feel like there's still something more general than this. What do you mean, Andrew? Oh, sorry, it's not Java. Wow, okay, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, it's C++. But I don't like the, um, in C++, but I don't like the <laughs> colors in, in, in C++, whatever. Yeah, this is C++, even though it doesn't look like that. <laughs> Maybe, but it is. Because when Igor switched from Java to C++, he, I guess he just rewrote his library into C++, but he wanted to keep most stuff like this range. I guess probably he had the same in Java. And yeah, J++, yeah, <laughs> correct. Maybe Kava. You can't do DPs with two numbers ranges in linear time. Yeah, so we mean that if we want to have two numbers, to build two numbers for left, right at the same time, we will just have, we, we can't use this template easily, right? Range is coming soon to C. Okay, how soon is it? And also, how much time? No range in Java, it's too slow there. Okay. But now you can enjoy all the speed of C++, right? C++ in dot read int, yeah. <laughs> so this part is definitely inspired by Java. Yeah, do it in segments square. Uh, we can save all the segments into an array in this function and then do whatever outside. But yeah, sometimes DGDP might be faster. C++ 20, okay. But also how long until we have C++ 20 available on online judges? We'll see. Some online judges are not fast, the fastest to update the compilers and the standards. Iota view iterator. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> this one is fun. Yeah, that looks it looks interesting. Maybe I should be using it later. <laughs> you can barely code on top coder because your Y combinator stuff doesn't work because top coder still uses C++11. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay, that looks cool at least. So in C++20, maybe we'll have more chances to catch up with Igor's magical templates. If, okay, I, I also missed the comment about D. So if the ellipse with foci A and B uh, touches the circle in the point P, let's see, let's say it touches the circle in the point P, then the angle between AP and tangent, 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 whatever, equals the angle between BP and tangent. Okay, that's true, I guess. So 
So we, mm, but there are several such points, right? Because like if we just continue the B sector, which goes through the middle of the AB segment, we get to some point C, let's say, and this, it has the same uh, this, like the same condition applies to that point, the same property it has. It has the same property, but it's not the prop point we need. But maybe, maybe it's fine. Maybe there are just several points. Uh, what equals plus are they up to now? So some, some. Uh, Online judges are up to C++ 17, some judges are up to C++ 14, and some are up to C++ 11. Hopefully none are up to smaller than C++ 11, but I can't tell for sure. I don't remember any at least. Uh, okay, so what, did, what else did we have? So F was the easiest problem. And I think the my approach was maybe the easiest one. And actually I was, I had an array of size 100,000, but I could just easily do the same with a map. Maybe with two map, but with one, one map would be easier. And then I wouldn't care about the range of the numbers. Just one map from int to pair of int int, which will maintain the number of good customers which do have car sharing and the bad ones and just go through the map in increasing order so it's kind of easy yeah OA is equal to OB uh, I think because OA equal to OB Z is the intersection of our circle and circle built on O, A, B. Interesting idea. Hmm. I can't figure out the details like as to why this is true, but at least for some corner cases it looks correct, so it's interesting. I like the idea, but can't confirm it. Uh, I have no idea what was the hardest task I've ever done. It's not easy to answer the question. Because the definition of heart is not objective, maybe. The normal to an ellipse is always an angle bisector. Can't confirm it nor deny it, yes. What is my favorite problem from this Snark News Summer series? Um, I have no idea what problems did you have. This one was standard, this one, okay. This one matching, this one was of square root. I love it. This one was substitute the polynomial several times and F was geometry. Yeah, I remember that one. This one was the incorrect one. This one was the one where they had a too hard DP. This one was when I, which I read incorrectly, so I, so it has to be DP and two set. This one what was which I also read incorrectly, so I solved for sum instead of maximum. And this one was absurd, and this one was a suffix array and typed the rest in nine minutes. Uh, this one was, uh, yeah, I actually asked for Snark News 
uh, ask Snark News for a solution to problem A from, from round three, which was about uh, drawing crosses on a grid. And it turned out that the problem was also not posed <laughs> totally correctly because the crosses were not allowed to be neighboring. So, for example, this test case was a valid one for those who remember the problem. And this test case is, the answer to this test case is actually no. Because we cannot pick, like the next, like suppose we drew some, some crosses, and then for each of the next crosses, the cell we choose cannot be already marked out, but also its neighbors also cannot be marked out. So, for example, and also, you even cannot pick cells which are borders of the grid. So, for example, even in this case, the answer is uh, negative one, fortunately. So, it turns out that the problem is quite different. Uh, but I pretty much like the problem after it's fixed. Not like this. I, I agree. I, I agree. It's, I mean... I'm laughing, but it's a bit unfortunate we have such kind of hiccups. But so we've had a couple of incorrect problems out of 30. It's not the greatest thing to have, but maybe we shouldn't be too worried. Especially since I won. I mean, whatever. I'm just joking. So, but actually, the solution is pretty nice. I had a couple. <laughs> How many did you? <laughs> you had much more. Okay. <laughs> I see. Sorry about that, but I guess that's your choice. After all, but someone has to do it. Um, it still is not easy, right? But. I can explain the solution quickly. It's pretty nice, I'd say. Uh, I would say. So the main question is how do we find the position of the first click of the first operation? Because, for example, as we discussed on stream in this case, with three horizontal and three vertical lines, the only first cell we can click is the center cell. We have to draw the cross, which goes, which crosses out the middle lines, and then we also draw four smaller crosses. And the solution to find in this point is easy. And the solution is as follows. Let's start in the left top corner and go bottom right until we find a cross center, some cross center. So for example, in this case, we start in this cell. Uh, yeah, we start with in the top left cell and we just go bottom right and we encounter this one. Then again, we, after we found this cell, let's write it down, write it coordinate down, and continue going to the right and down until we find another center. So this is another center, and we continue, and we go, and in this case, we find this center. So in total, we find three centers. So we'll find this center, this center, and this center. So the, the cells marked with the sharps are the ones we will write down on our journey from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. And then the, we can do the same, but going from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. And so we will write down this cell, this cell, and this cell. And the idea that is that the only first operation we can do is the intersection of these two cells. We just uh, take the cell which belongs to both sets because just because the cell which is the first operation has to appear in both sets just from the way the crosses are built. And uh, also we can see that one sequence of cells we write down is strictly going from top left to bottom right, and the other one strictly goes from bottom left to top right. So they can only have at most one intersection. So we just take that intersection and just go recurse on four different sub-rectangles. And uh, after that, we also have to do some priority queue stuff to find the smallest lexicographically answer, but that's not the most important one. So, yeah, that's the 
solution to this problem. And I, I, I think that if this problem was correct, that, that this one would be the my, my favorite one. But maybe it's still my favorite one because we should take a look at the contents. Uh, there are not many comments Raphael sent us, but there are, there are some in the channel name, in the channel title. So the difference between the original and the real statement was that uh, in this case the answer is negative one because we cannot make operations into cells on the border of our rectangle of our grid and another difference is that for example in uh, this test case uh, so let's say we have this test case so in this test case one sequence of operations could be just take the center cell mark the center cross and then take the bottom like the 3-3 three, three cell the 4-4 four, four cell whatever and we will write this cross again without the left and the top part. And this test case, the correct answer is also negative one because we cannot, we are not allowed uh, to make an a cross without some parts. We just we always need to have something going up, something going left, something going down, something going right. That's the difference. So in some sense, the crosses are much more clear in this setup. So yeah, that's what the, that was the difference, and the solution is quite cool actually. Let's go again and look at the problem. So problem B was bit sets. I, I like. I, I think this is also a nice problem, even though I didn't like it before. But my solution is pretty nice, and the others are also probably nice. But I don't as much enjoy the whatever segment three of sets, whatever solutions. But anyway, problem C is kind of. Uh, exercise on minimum cost flows. D was easy, E was easy DP, and F was repeated from Snark News Summer Series 2019. Uh, A here was just greedy, B was IOI 2001 problem, C was two pointers, and uh, I mean, I guess this one is pretty involved, but in general, you can't go, you can't make it much differently. Like your all, all of the solutions should be pretty similar. So I, I would say that maybe not the best problem, but definitely not the worst. So I, I would rate it quite highly. D was geometry. And E was TP. Yeah, E is nice. The problem about bonuses from the from round four was nice. So maybe this one. This one could be the my favorite one. Uh, and F was easy. And here A was. I guess my solution, my idea to A should be correct, but I won't absolve, of course. B was digit stuff. C was. Yeah. Also, by, by the way, about problem C, those who solved it, what were your solutions? Is there any easier way? The voice quality became bad, maybe because I've been talking for three hours already. Maybe my my voice quality is definitely going bad. Sorry. Uh, Pick mine got accepted with n square. Said why didn't I? Uh, most likely I will be streaming Snark News Winter Series 2021 if there is one, Milos, but we'll see. I, I guess I will do some more streams before that. So there is a lot of GeoGebra and geometry discussions, which I haven't followed exactly. Uh, the problem Problem A could be better if it was phrased in terms of dividing a rectangle to four smaller rectangles. Yeah, probably. Maybe it would make the, make the problem statement easier to understand. Um, 
what else? Yeah, so anyone else willing to explain the how, how they did problem C? Because I just don't know yet if there is an easier way or maybe a better way. Uh, from what you discussed, it's either product on segment in different ways or something with composite modules. Yeah, composite modules are also a way. I can do C in n log n modulo a large prime. n log n? Is it, uh, is it n times the number of divisors of k? And not n log n? Oh, n log n because you can do some polynomial stuff, right? Exp yes. Yeah, sure. You just build a polynomial and you just exponentiate it, right? To make all so it's like so if you utilize exponential generating functions, right? Exponential? Probably. And just yeah, take care about partitions of n into stuff. Yeah. I see. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe maybe given that I have all that stuff prepared in my library, maybe it would have been even easier to implement it. But, oh, no, but it's also, yeah, the module was composite, so I couldn't do it, yeah. Whatever, don't mind. Uh, exponential generating functions don't work module small numbers. It works, you can do Chinese Iranian theorem. How do you do 1 over 2 modulo 4? That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know the way, but... Maybe Ildar knows some secret technique. Uh, from you, how do contest about modula to um, which one was that? Unfortunately, I'm not sure I remember it. Also, what's DLS? I, yeah, DLS. I mean, you mean DLS? You mean you, you how do, right? Sure. was about exponential generation function convolution modulo to 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 power 232 mm. so it was that you just uh, do the usual stuff module like only with odd numbers and you also have to remember the power of 2 which is yes do <laughs> Correct, I remember that. So is it that one? I mean, so, so I, I don't remember how it's done, but I guess, yeah, you can do it. I see. Uh, okay. It's been quite a long time. I have not same things works for primes more than two, I guess. So you can use arbitrary modulum. Should should just do that once for the library and not ever any time later, right? That's the best strategy with this algorithm, I think. Just implement it and forget. Yeah. Just joking. Anyway, so problem C, I have not uh, explained the solution in detail, but in general, it was about, like I said during the contest, so it was about counting permutations, which have lengths n, and all cycles have to be divisors of k. 
all cycle lengths might, might be divisors of k. And we have to count the permutations modulo some big number. And so the solution is just f of i is uh, the number of permutations of lengths i, which have lengths of cycles divisors of k. And the solution is just pick the first element of the permutation and just try all possible lengths of cycles which try all possible lengths of uh, cycles which contain the first element. So we first we wrote down all the divisors of k, and then here we just go through all the divisors again, and if this divisor does not exceed i, so here, as you can see, by the way, I implemented dynamic programming backwards, which is not characteristic of me, but for some reason I did. Anyway, so I just loop over the length of the cycle of the first element, and I just multiply the number of permutations of i minus that element uh, length. And then also I have to multiply it by some coefficient, which is the number of ways to choose a divisor, like let's say d. Let's, let's say this is d. So I want just multiply this actually here by the number of ways to pick uh, d elements, actually d minus one element, because I know that the first element belongs to that cycle, but I want to pick some more d minus one elements out of the remaining i minus one, because the first element is fixed, but then I multiply it by the number of ways to pick d minus one elements out of the remaining i minus one, and also multiply it by the number of ways to permute those numbers, those d minus one numbers. Uh, on the cycle, which is d minus one factorial, and so this is equal equivalent to uh, multiplication by i minus d factorial, uh, i minus one factorial over i minus d factorial, and so this is just equal to i minus one multiply times i minus two times and so on times i minus d plus one. So I just Um, to get that product, I have a segment tree of all numbers from 1 to n with products of all numbers in their nodes of segment tree, and I just take some segment in segment tree and get it product, get its product and multiply. That was the solution to see, just for those interested. And there was a lot of discussion on D, E, we discussed E as well, so I guess we are done with the stuff. Uh, uh, okay, whatever. Let's take a look at some links. Open cup question. Uh, let I I. Oof, oof. What's my idea for a umnik who is the only one to solve it asks? Okay, let's figure out. <coughs> so first of all, I'm not sure why this is 3.9 and we are moving to the left, but we stop at point 0.29. Is it... Probably incorrect, or maybe the x axis goes from right to left. And but then is the is the problem statement just so we are at we are at some point we can uh, push our ourselves somewhere and we are just sliding until we hit a wall and then we stop there. And if there are no walls in the direction where we pushed ourselves, then we just never we just slide. Uh, infinitely and never stop. And number, we want to minimize the number of pushes we make. Is that the problem? And we want to get from point A to point B. It's the ice block puzzle. Yeah, that probably that's what, how it's called. I never, I never remember. But we can once stop anywhere. But you have to go through the finish. You mean that? 
Oh, we given we are given one stop. Cre okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I forgot about this point, but even without it, I, it was enough for me. Okay. Uh, we can stop anywhere once. So I would assume that in this case we have to do BFS from left to right from the starting point and find the distances for all points uh, without the stop and also do the same from the finish point, find the distance to all points. Then we can describe these distances as rectangles on the plane and maybe we want to find, I don't know, maybe some sweep line or something like that to find the point which has the smallest total of the distance from start and from finish. Uh, yeah, just lines, not rectangles, correct. So is it something like that? I'm not sure about the details, but I guess it's kind of mid in the middle. We go from right left to right and from right to left. I mean from start to some points and from finish. But the details, I mean, I'm not sure about the details. What is the easiest way to implement it? How did you implement it? Can you describe shortly? I mean briefly. Shortly is a different word. I don't have much English practice in general, but I like for the last several months I only spoke English on stream and maybe in some calls once a month. But maybe if I do more, then I can enjoy it. You think I described it fine? Okay, so let me then make sure how I understand it. So I can go from, okay, I go from start, let's say. I want to find the distances to all points. So first I, I have to build the graph. So I want to find some kind of edges. I can go from this point to this point in one step. And then this edge is also actually a, uh, well, a line, a horizontal vertical line. So eventually what I have is uh, I have some horizontal vertical lines which have some distance to all points on this line. But what bothers me a bit is that those lines can intersect, right? I can have a horizontal line which has distance 5 and the vertical line which has distance 6. So it eventually looks like to all points on that line, on the horizontal line, the distance is 5 and to all points on the vertical line except the middle point, the distance is 6. So let's say I have some set of lines for the start to finish and for the finish to start. I want to have the minimum of those lines for the first set of lines. I want to have the minimum for the second set and I want to find the point with the smallest sum of those minimums. It doesn't matter if I have multiple distances to the same point. It kind of does matter because I want to, eventually I want to find the distance, like I want to find the point which had the smallest minimum of distance from start and minimum of distance from finish. I cannot just take the two smallest distances for each point, right? It's more convenient to say that segments are vertices. Uh, segments are vertices. Okay. But that doesn't change much, so, so right, I have segments which are vertices, but after that uh, it's the same setup I, I, I have told, right? Because I might have some horizontal and vertical segment which intersect at some point and they, those segments give different distances to this point, right? So I'm not sure about what's the problem. That's a good question. I just take minimum of minimums. Mm. 
Mm, I need the sum of minimums, right? Is it the minimum of minimums? I need the sum of min the sum of minimums for two cells, no? Oh, it reduces two given vertical lines with values a, i, and horizontal. Yeah, because we only want to intersect vertical with horizontal, right? Okay, yeah, that's that's a great point. Yeah, because we don't want to go from start to horizontal segment and then from finish to horizontal segment and then just stop on that segment because we just want it. Yeah, that's that's pointless. So. Yeah, in this case it's clear, yeah. So we just do a simple sweep line um, and then just, yeah, take the minimum on the segment. I see, I see. Yeah, okay, that's, that problem is not too bad, but more implementation heavy that, than I would prefer, but anyway, it's not that bad. I unfortunately had zero time to try it. I couldn't even solve E. Uh, but even if I did, I don't think that six problem. It was pretty hard to solve six problems in this contest. Anyway, all right. So we have discussed all the problems, in, uh, even A now. I think it's time for me to stop this for now. Again, my voice is quite tired, and I'm probably quite tired too. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, hello, but we're wrapping up. Mm. Uh, let me open the serious things, but probably they are not updated yet. But anyone, who, a, a, anyway, who cares, right? Yeah, so that was the serious standings, and the fifth round is not updated here yet. But we can figure out that we have 50 points today, so we have 425 points eventually, which should be enough. But anyway, I mean, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, so today we did not great, not terrible. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. And now the biggest question is I have to decide, maybe right, not right now, but I have to decide what to do next. And as I discussed before the Snark News round, my current idea is that I want to tune in on the 14th of September, most likely, after the round, so that could be 8 p.m. Moscow time, maybe, and do the education round 95 and maybe also, probably also, round 60, 670 on stream. and trying to explain my thoughts during the process like I did today. So today was a test run of round 669. I was trying to do that and hopefully that, that went well enough. So I'll try to do it on a bigger scale and probably do two just two rounds on the next stream. So don't go anywhere and still follow me on Twitch and Check my blog posts and comments at Code Forces. And that's it for the Snark News series, but not it for the for my streaming in general, hopefully. So once again, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, and let's just take the final minute. Yeah, thanks again to Erikto for the rate. And I would be glad to rate you if you are if you ever stream that late. Any any day later. And yeah, thanks everyone for watching. See you 
in the future. So, bye-bye.